On today's show, the Bucks get back on track on the second day of a back-to-back -back, and they beat the Washington Wizards and there was some big performance from the others as Javon Carter called them after the game. Carter was great. Ingles uh, hit some big shots and Giannis also recorded a triple-double and he did it in interesting fashion. So we've got some fun stuff to break down from this one. The Bucks beat the Wizards. Let's get into it. You are locked on Bucks, your daily Milwaukee Bucks podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. You are locked on, Bucks. My name's Kane Pittman. You can see and hear me on this show Monday to Friday and also find my work over at ESPN. And alongside me, still at the office, one of the greatest work hostels we've ever seen in the history of the Milwaukee Bucks franchise from the Bucks Radio Network, Justin Garcia. We thank you all for making Locked On Bucks your first watch or first listen of every single day. We appreciate all the feedback, the comments, and basically all Bucks fans getting together and discussing what this team has been doing on a nightly basis. And tonight, perhaps the mood will be a little bit better than it was 24 hours ago. So if you haven't subscribed and liked and followed and commented, uh, it's free to do, and it really helps us. So we really, really appreciate that. Today's episode is brought to you by Price Picks. First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to 100 bucks with the promo code locked on. That's pricepicks.com. Promo code locked on. Justin, 117 to 111. And you kind of never know what you're going to get on the second night of a back-to-back. -back. Obviously, it was a pretty big game against the Sixers yesterday. But for the most part, everyone played again. It's still only Chris Milton who's not playing on these back-to-backs. But you got Giannis, you got Brooke, Holiday. Joe Ingles played again on the back-to-backs. That seems to not be an issue for him anymore as well. So uh, I guess... You know, from the outset, this quickly became a game that the Bucks couldn't afford to lose. Yeah, we were uh, kind of talking about that on the pregame show too. Is that's I'm not going to say surprise, but it's it's been like the the pleasant surprise, I guess, that uh, we talk about how many back to backs this team has down the stretch here. But we've got to the point where everybody but Chris is playing and. I know that's that's going to draw more like, well, when is, you know, I'm disappointed that Chris isn't playing in these. He's not. And we understand that's probably not going to be the case for the rest of the year. But the fact that Joe Ingles is playing in both of these, Jay Crowder is as well. It's still kind of a, man, I can't believe we progressed this far to where the injuries were earlier in the season. And now basically everybody's played. Yeah, and Bud plays 10 guys uh, tonight as well. AJ Green got a few minutes, but really mostly the nine guys played. So it's not like they were sharing you know, massive minutes or anything like that. Guys played real minutes. Giannis clocked 36, Drew Holiday 34, and then you can go down the list there. So that that is fascinating. And I think a little bit, it goes to speak to what Zach Lowe was talking about a few days ago with the Bucks. Yeah, maybe they are really focused on the number one seed. And they know that last night they let one slip. If they won last night, does it mean that maybe Giannis doesn't play today? I'm not 100% sure, but we should also note that the Bucks got some good luck tonight with uh, with our New York Knicks getting the job done in double <laughs> overtime against the Boston Celtics, which does help. I believe now it's a game and a half gap. But it does make me wonder how hard they are chasing this number one seed. I think there's something to it. Um, and, you know, you got a double dose of potentially a double dose of help tonight that you won. And it's, it's mm. starting to become more regularity that the bucks are beating teams that they should beat, which is always a good sign. And it's, it's not necessarily the norm as uh, we can attest to the last few years. Uh, but as you mentioned that Celtics loss, so you're two up in the loss column. Um, you and I talked about this a, a couple weeks ago in getting ready for the Sixers game. I think the disappointing part of last night's loss, and by the way, I think every Bucks fan deep down knew they were going to lose last night, that it's just what Philadelphia does. Mm. They can be in the biggest rut ever, but if they have a chance to stop momentum or win on a big occasion against the Bucks, they do it. So I entered assuming it was going to be a loss, but if you would have won, you really could have really driven the stake in Philadelphia to not get up to the top two lines. Six back with 18 games, 19 games left. That's just, it's insurmountable, basically, especially with the Bucks at that point having the tiebreaker with one game left. So now that at least leaves it open. But Boston loses tonight, so you're two games up in the loss column. You got one game left, and it's going to be at home. And I know 
you talk about the scheduling and the back-to-backs and everybody's saying, well, we get Boston and we get these teams, uh, the Nuggets, and it's a back-to-back. We're seeing Bud play these guys in both nights, so there's that to file away. Uh, but also, Boston went into double overtime against mm-hmm. a team that was playing without their best player in Jalen Brunson. And you look at the minutes totals for those guys, they were clearly playing to win, just as I think the Bucks were last night. But Al Horford played close to 50 minutes in the 40s. Jason Tatum was at 49. Al Horford's not playing tomorrow. Boston has a back-to-back. So not only is it a back-to-back and how they're going to use those guys, it's a back-to-back against the Cavs, who suddenly have to keep winning because the Knicks are right on their heels. So this may have caused a ripple effect where the Bucks are able to get a lot of help and, and hopefully start to take care of business. As you got some tough games next week, but as frisky as the Nets have been, as much as Orlando's been better, these are games you should win going into that West Coast road trip. And of course, we're just excited that they started another winning streak. So let's get into some of the performances from this game tonight. And definitely we're going to get to Javon Carter because, uh, you know, Goran Dragic was on the bench tonight and we've discussed this. So I haven't uh, spoken about it with you yet, but we can get into that a little bit later in the show. Uh, As I mentioned, we did get big minutes from Joe Ingles and Jay Crowder, not so much. So I want to ask you about that. But first of all, let's get to the biggest story of this game. Giannis, uh, I would say he was looking to defer early in this game and the Bucs were knocking down those threes. It's a back-to-back. We know a lot of times this is when the Bucs are just going absolute volume shooting from the outside. And if they shoot well, they're probably going to win. They were 22 for 49 overall from three-point land. And Giannis has 13 assists, 23 points, and nine rebounds as he brings the ball up the floor and the game is over. And then he shoots the ball into the Bucs basket. So, you know, he's obviously not going to score. That's uh, you got to have great respect for the game. Collects his own offensive rebound and gets the triple-double. I, I, I mean, I was laughing. I, I already know what people are going to say tomorrow on all the TV shows. They'll be like, this is terrible. He's a stat patter. He's all this. Do you care about this? Or why, why would anyone care? It's just funny, right? It's funny, but it's also... Uh... And it's tough to it's tough to defend the narrative of Giannis just blocks all that out and doesn't pay attention no. to it when when somebody I'm I'm guessing Thanasis told him hey you need one more rebound for a triple double. Well, I I will say that you're exactly right, and I, I've been saying this for years in this show. I'm sure that we've had the discussion before. I and tr- trust me, I don't care about it. I think it's great. You should be aware of your stats, and you should care about all these individual things because. If you're as a competitor at the level that Giannis is, I think it would be pretty strange if you literally didn't care about it. So I've always said he's always assist hunting when he gets near that triple double, and we get so frustrated because for whatever reason the Bucks aren't able to hit those threes. So yes, I, I would like to say there can be no one out there now that says that he's not aware of this and he's not not trying to hunt for those triple doubles when the game is over, mind you, which it obviously was tonight as well. So. Uh, he had a big smile on his face. I'm not sure if he said anything after the game. You did the post game. Was he asked about it? I didn't hear. And so road games are kind of tricky where at times, and especially depending on how many, uh, what the contingency of reporters is. And on this road trip, we know our friend Eric isn't, isn't there. So very, very light a collection of reporters on the road in this game and in Orlando on Tuesday. So I haven't heard anything from the locker room yet. Uh, I'm going to be curious if he is asked about it if for no other reason than just to hear how he laughs off the answer that he gives well the one thing i do love about Giannis is people will say all this negative stuff like they did last week when he was cracking all the jokes on the on the daily show and i i do not think that he cares about that i don't think he's going to care any less about what old heads want to be complaining about this uh stat padding or whatever you want to call it but let us know in the youtube comments what you think about it I'm sure there'll be someone out there that that would prefer that he didn't do that. I don't know. Everyone's always got different opinions, but we're going to get to some of the other performances from this game next. Javon Carter, Grayson Allen, Brooke Lopez with some monster blocks. So we're going to break this down this game a little bit further after we talk about our friends from Prize Picks. And if you're not aware of how Prize Picks works, it's pretty simple. You just pick two to six players, and if they score more or less than their Prize Picks projection, you can win up to 25 times your money. On any entry, there's no competing against other people. It's just you versus the projections available. Uh, so I don't know what the rebounding number was tonight for Giannis, but let's just say the rebounding number was nine and a half. There would have been people that were thrilled about what Giannis did at the end of this game. Uh, it's not just NBA, though. You can get uh, prize picks projections on any sport you watch from 
uh, baseball, which is just about to be back, hockey, golf, college sports, and everything in between. You make your entries in 60 seconds or less. It's safe and currently operational in over 30 states in Canada. So download the PrizePix app or go to prizepix.com to sign up and play daily fantasy sports. First-time users can receive a 100% instant deposit match up to 100 bucks with the promo code locked on. If you deposit 100, they'll give you 100. If you deposit 50, they'll give you 50. Don't enter. Uh, don't forget to enter the promo code locked on at sign up for an instant deposit match up to 100 bucks. That's Prize Picks Daily Fantasy made easy. We've spoke a lot about the depth on this team, uh, particularly when you add Jay Crowder, you start to get some guys back in the lineup. Now they've gone and added Goran Dragic. We'll see what that means moving forward, but I assume we're going to at least get a little bit of a look at him on the floor. And Javon Carter was interviewed after the game by Zora Stevenson, and he said he was about the idea of these guys being the others, the not Drew, not Chris, not Giannis, just coming up big and having different contributors every single night. We've seen Javon Carter have some pretty big nights uh, throughout the season. A lot of the times it's been when guys have been out of the lineup tonight. Seven for 13. Actually took the second most shots on the team just behind Brooke Lopez. It is 20 points, six for 10 from three. And, you know, I've questioned you know, what does it look for him in the playoffs? Maybe the Bucks go a little bit bigger. They get a bit more size. Uh, but there's no question, 42% from three on the season. He has been a really, really nice and reliable option for this team. And, and to be honest, has earned every minute that he gets. He's earned it. Um, he's, he, we've kind of, it started in what, like January-ish, December, where you would, somebody would point out, hey, by the way, do you know Javon Carter is leading the team in three-point shooting? And you kind of waited for that to regress. And it's hung around all season. And I think he's found the perfect role with this team. Um, you know, the interesting thing is the addition of Goran Dragic. Um, not quite, not to say it hasn't been, but not quite as polarizing as I anticipated it to be with Bucks fans. It seems like there's a little more embrace than I anticipated. But you have heard a lot of, well, Javon Carter's playing well. Why do you need him? Um, and look, you pointed this out too. What he's given you so far in the regular season has been great. Who knows what his role is in the postseason? We saw that role was non-existent last year. But what he's doing now, the addition of Goran Dragic, these are important because everybody loves going back to 2021 when they won the title. And we think about P.J. Tucker, how well Pat Connaughton played, and just how this team was able to play differently with P.J. What we kind of sweep under the rug was there was absolutely no depth. That team was seven deep. And depending on the matchup, sometimes all seven of those guys weren't really playable. It was your starters, Pat Connaughton and Bobby Portis. And I go back to this because it was a week or so ago that you saw more of the, hey, let's dunk on Bud with, I can't believe this guy was playing Jeff Teague in the finals and in the conference finals. But he had to. There was no other options there. That's what the roster was. And that's why these moves, like a Goran Dragic, are significant because – who knows what's going to happen in terms of your health? We saw that last year. Guys are going to be playable versus one team and not so much against the next. So you need as many of these as you can get. It doesn't mean you're going to play all 11 or 10 or 12 guys, but you have to have more than one option. The Bucks were fortunate to win a title when they had very few options. You don't want to do that again. And whether it's Javon Carter and, and if he can play against the Celtics and what teams he can or can't, same is going to be said for Goran Dragic. You just need more of that. And more importantly, Javon Carter, we can go back to last year. He doesn't have a whole lot of postseason experience. And part of that, you can say he should have played last year. He didn't. But I think it's 18 games that he's played in the playoffs. Goran Dragic has a lot of playoff experience. And it's kind of like when you go out in the workforce and look for a job and everybody says, well, you need experience. There's only one way to get that. and That's for you to hire me. That's Javon Carter saying, I need playoff experience to so play me. But Goran Dragic has it. And you know, versus some teams, he's hit some big shots and you can play him. So the more guys you can get, the better. It helps you in the regular season, but it gives you options for when things dwindle in the postseason. It does. And it's going to be fascinating because, you know, offensively, he's also the type of guy, and we even saw it tonight. I mean, he takes some some wild shots that that if you just, if you weren't watching the Bucks uh, nightly like we were, 
and you were aware of who Javon Carter is, but you would perhaps think, he, what is this guy doing? Yeah, you would think, like, get this guy off the floor. Why is he taking those shots with with all the other sort of stars that are out there on the floor? But it, it's been one of those things that I think has built through the season with him in terms of being aggressive, being confident, and, and taking those shots. And you kind of need him to take those shots in the offense because he does feel like a guy, like tonight, is absolutely good evidence of this, that when he does hit one or two, he is definitely a guy that that feeds off the confidence. And he was talking trash to Bradley Beal going uh, up and down the floor as well. So he is absolutely a confidence guy. And I think for him to be effective with this team, He's just he has to take those shots, and the the problem is that if it gets to the postseason and he has a night where he's not shooting the ball well, you know those are going to be tough shots to watch. But uh, again, I think you you have to feed into the confidence, and you have to like that he has been uh, willing to to let those go. Yeah, and and that last point you made is the big one that if we get to the postseason and those shots aren't falling. That's when it becomes the narrative. This is a problem, and you can't play Javon Carter, but that's where he finds his rhythm. He is a rhythm shooter, and it may be frustrating, but the transition pull-up three, that's his best shot. I mean, we have seen him have a little bit of success with the catch and shoot, but it's been, you know, off the bounce that he's a catch or he's a pull-up guy. And the the tough part where you would say, okay, let's rein it in a little bit in the postseason, is it does seem like a lot of these these instances and these pull-ups are when you're getting in transition and you got Giannis in front of you. And when you get to the postseason, it's, Hey, let's, let's make sure we get the ball to Giannis so he can at least get to the line or try to finish here. And not so much a Javon Carter pull up three, but that's when it's going to going to become a loud problem with some bucks fans is if you get to the playoffs, especially deeper in the playoffs and he hits a cold spell and that shot, isn't falling and it's that transition three pointer. Yeah. And sometimes yeah, sometimes it doesn't look great. Like there was a, a moment yesterday in the game against Philly where Chris Milton was wide open in the corner wow. and Carter kind of looked him off and then dribbled into a mid-ranger and bricked it, you know? And and again, like I was watching that and I kind of like laughed about it at the time, but also I was like, well, yeah, I, I like that he's actually at the point now where he will take these shots and actually wants to be a threat offensively. So I think it's I think it's a fine balance with Carter, but but no question. He has been better than I, I thought he was going to be this season. I always thought he was a, a pretty solid player, but even some of the stuff he does defensively. And again, one of those guys that is going to be really, really annoying for the opposition uh, if you get across seven games and you've got this guy uh, in your face for the entirety of the seven games. So we'll see, but he deserves nothing but credit for what he's been able to do. Uh, I want to talk to, about some of the other guys that uh, played well tonight. Grayson Allen as well had a, had a big fourth quarter on the back of his big third quarter against Philly, and not for the first time, he hit some big shots when the Bucks needed it. So we'll get to that next. After we talk about Built Bar, because if you're looking for a delicious treat and don't want all the fat and calories, you've got to try a Built Bar. It's still hard to believe. I've been doing this ad read for years now, and uh, I still can't wrap my head around the idea that it tastes this good, but it's actually healthy for you as well. There, there is not a snack like this covered in chocolate that the Built Bars are 100% real chocolate that should be healthy for you. It just it doesn't make sense to me, Justin. You've had them. You know they're delicious. Only 130 calories, 4 grams of sugar with a whopping 17 grams of protein. And the flavors, you know they sound delicious. Churro, peanut butter, brownie, coconut, almond. Uh, and I'm a big coconut uh, fan, as you know. You are shaking your head, but uh, the good news is that there's plenty of variety. If you don't want to get the coconut flavors, you can get a brownie, batter, or churro uh, Built Bar as well, so it is just uh, superb. And go to Walmart or Sam's Club if you don't want to go to Built.com so you can take a 13-bar box straight home with you. Built Bar is a delicious and healthy snack. Go check it out, and you can thank me later for that. So Grayson Allen struggled for you know, from a scoring perspective uh, tonight, but he comes up big in the fourth quarter and knocks down a couple of shots because this game did get a little scarily close down the stretch and they were able to knock down some shots. Where is your trust level with Grayson Allen? I've been pretty high on him all season and there was certainly a stretch where I started to just wobble a little bit when it came to possibly making a trade and making an upgrade. But all along, I was I was really pushing the agenda that do what you can to upgrade the roster and do what you can to get Jay Crowder, but also 
try your best to keep this man on the roster because I think he's a guy that can can win you a playoff game. Yeah, I um, had kind of maintained all along. I was in favor of Jay Crowder. Um, basically what you're describing, I was in favor of, of getting Jay Crowder, but not at the expense of Grayson Allen. And um, in terms of regular season, I think all of us that have kept our Grayson Allen stock feel vindicated. I mean, two straight games where – all the points he scored came in one quarter. And mm. as, as you pointed to, he can win you a playoff game. We saw that against the Bulls in the first round last year. And when he's on, you see what it does. Last night in the third quarter or two nights ago in the third quarter, he was the guy that really was the biggest reason why that lead ballooned to 18 against the Sixers with the way he could just detonate. And tonight when you needed it, when the Wizards were not only hanging around, but erased that double figure lead at halftime or margin at halftime, and went in front themselves, it was Grayson Allen shooting that slowly started to bring you back in. So um, I do have belief in him. A lot of it hinges on what the matchup is, but I'm going to die in the hill of as bad as things got last year and as rough as it looked, it doesn't look that bad, and those aren't the results you get if this team is healthier and if Chris Middleton is on the floor. And not just that, you know, for as much as we talked about how much Jay Crowder pushes this team towards complete. He may help Grayson Allen more than anyone because that takes a huge load off of Grayson Allen's shoulders, especially how much we've seen Jay Crowder essentially playing your two at times and defending guys in the backcourt that he's eating up those minutes where you asked Grayson Allen through last year and step into some matchups that are really tough for him. If we're being honest in positions he shouldn't be in it changed everything for Grayson this year without Chris Middleton on the floor. And I think it changed it for the better that it's, it's something he's said he's been able to do throughout his whole career, but he really had to show that and work on it this year with not just being the guy that catches and shoots and a three point guy. He said to put the ball on the floor and facilitate and attack the basket. And I think these are all things that it, it's really going to help him in the postseason, but especially this team adding more wings and alleviating some of that off of Grayson Allen, it looks a lot different when he's not your only option, when it's just, hey, we got Drew and Grayson Allen and Wesley Matthews. You two guys got to split the rest of the minutes and catch everything else. He's up to 41.6% on the season from three. So just a a tick behind uh, Javon Carter there, more volume. I mean, he's getting up five threes a game. I think we always... Well, not always, but we do look at Grayson Allen sometimes and think you can shoot more as well. Those threes are always going to be there for him. And the big thing for the postseason stuff, he really is a guy that the opposition knows they need to defend. Now, I don't know if you get into a series with Boston, what changes with the starting lineup. Grayson Allen's been a major minutes guy all season long. So I figure when when slash if Chris Milton comes back into the starting lineup, which uh, it's going to happen at some point, I figure he replaces Pat Connaughton and Grayson Allen is there. If you get to a series against Boston, I I don't know whether Jay Crowder then does come into the starting lineup. We'll see what happens in the future. One other thing for Grayson Allen tonight that I wanted to say. Bradley Beal landed on Grayson Allen's back and then fell to the floor and then was getting all angry about it like Grayson Allen did something wrong. This 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 human land, what was he supposed to do with a human literally on his back? The uh, the slander has to to stop, it's and the ridiculous. crowd was was really getting into it too. Dave tried to do his best to proactively say, "Guys, let's calm down here." Grayson Allen was just moving out of the way, and said, "This better not bubble into another Chicago incident where Grayson Allen is all of a sudden the number one villain in all of the NBA." But it, it's just one of those things where now I think, it, and Grayson has kind of alluded to this as well, right or wrong, if if he's anywhere near anything or if something happens where a player falls down and Grayson Allen is in the area, we're going to jump to that conclusion of, well, Grayson Allen's at it again. Yeah. And I did like the fact that, you know, Jay Crowder straight away was like, what do you want about Drew Holiday moved over? The whole Bucks team was just like, man, they stop being ridiculous, which, which is good to say. You like to see that uh, sticking up for Grayson there. He obviously did nothing wrong in that scenario. Uh, the Ingles Crowder stuff, and again, I, I'm not sure where the Ingles and Crowder necessarily cancel each other out. It was a back to back. Jay Crowder's only just came back. Maybe that's another explanation for why his minutes were down. He didn't play a lot uh, last night in the game against Philly either. But I do think on a night like tonight, it's not like the Wizards have a ton of 
wings that you're like, yeah, let's put Jay Crowder out there for the defensive purposes. I did think tonight you get 26 from Ingles, which again, I mean, it has to be a positive if he's playing a back-to-back and playing those big minutes. That has to be a good sign. But again, I did think Joe Ingles, just the ability to just run half-court offense, particularly with Brook Lopez, get guys involved, um, was nice on a back-to-back because it did feel like at times it was like, all right, let's just stand around and shoot threes. He was able to get some some easy points and easy scores. Yeah, that was the case yesterday too where you, you saw a lot of that. Let's stand around and shoot threes. And that was a big part of Philadelphia coming back, playing smaller and being the team that was more energetic. So I, I think that's huge for this team as we've talked about a lot is how much Joe Ingles is going to help your half-court offense, especially in the playoffs. But the nice thing is, you've seen all these guys develop that chemistry with Giannis. It's, it's been there for a while with Giannis and Chris, it was a, a quick learn there with drew that they have that. Uh, but Joe Ingles has it, but more importantly, Joe Ingles. And you mentioned Brooke Lopez. It seems like that's the connection with those two guys. So to just have something outside of, well, we feed lobs to Giannis to get somebody else involved is going to be big for this team too. So that's nice to see. And, and the larger point is what you you mentioned at the top there that it's it's 13 months ago that Joe Ingles, a player in his mid 30s, blew out his ACL and he's he's playing back to backs here. So that is certainly a big positive for this team. And the the Jake Crowder thing, I just I take this as this is their on ramp for him and this is how to get him ready. Of well, we wanted to play him in a back to back and we wanted to kind of temper the minutes a little bit, but play him in both of these games especially if you look back at, at how the Bucks kind of uh, worked P.J. Tucker into the mix when they acquired him, pretty similar minutes load for P.J. I know he dealt with, I think, what, a calf injury uh, or a hamstring injury right after the acquisition, so that kind of slowed things down. But when you look at his minute totals and how they used him early on, it's kind of the same thing. It was around 13 to 15 minutes that they would play him. P.J. talked about his gripes with that and wanted to just really hit the ground running, but it wasn't until – seven or eight games, a little bit more than that, uh, that P.J. Tucker was starting to consistently play 20 and eventually 25 minutes. It took some time for him to get there, and I think that's what we're going to see with Jay Crowder as well. Yeah, I think that's right, and there is definitely an eagerness uh, among Bucks fans to get Jay Crowder out there, but I, I think you're right. And also, it is just the reality that uh, with the depth of this team, because you look at Crowder, he played 14 minutes, Everyone else is sort of around the or above the 20 mark there, but you hope at some point you've got to fit in 32 plus for Chris Middleton in the postseason as well. So the reality is, as we continually discuss, there are just going to be matchups or games or series where guys just might not play. And maybe Jay Crowder is not a guaranteed every night player. I think he probably is, but there might be stretches where it's not the case. Yeah, I I agree with all of that. And I've because I've heard a few people mentioned to me too of uh when you point out i think this is just kind of the plan to get jay crowder ready yeah but he played what 24 25 minutes against uh, phoenix in his second game in a bucks uniform yeah i think that was a case of when you're a kid and you talk your one of your parents into letting you stay up late (laughs) i think it was a case of that of uh, all right we'll let you go a little bit longer than we anticipated because of what this game means to you against the phoenix suns no, it's a very good point you make. All right, uh, after you're done with Locked On Bucks, of course, we thank you for making it your first listen or first watch. Go check out the Locked On Game to Game podcast, get recaps from around the NBA. And all the action here from Locked On Knicks and Locked On Celtics after that double overtime game there. So check out the Locked On Game to Game podcast on your Locked On NBA feed, wherever you get your podcasts or on YouTube. Uh, let's wrap this up, Justin. The back-to-back, the Bucks now got another couple, couple of days off. When are they back in action? Wednesday night? Uh, Tuesday. So it was supposed to be tomorrow. Tuesday was your back to back. Uh, but the NBA changed that schedule because that was the Wizards Pistons thing, I think, where they couldn't get to Detroit, mm. I want to say. Uh, so Tuesday in Orlando against the Magic. And then uh, you come home and you have the Nets on Thursday. All right. Well, the Bucks are going to continue to try and stay at the top of the East. Only 18 games left in the regular season. Regardless if they're not playing tomorrow, you know we're going to have a podcast for you on your Locked on Bucks feed. Subscribe, rate, drop a comment. Let us know what your thoughts were on this Wizards game and everything we've discussed on this show. Justin's going to go home and get some rest. So we'll wrap it up. Speak to you.